Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palne Pramanika. In this video, I'm going to talk about nine important dishes most popular in India. Even if you are from India, you might not have seen these foods, especially the last one. That's my favorite. Let's dive deep into it. As you guys know, I have been emphasizing on fermented foods each and every time I talk about gut bacteria because our gut bacteria loves fermented foods. Fermentation helps in breakdown of the products very easily, better absorption, feeds the good gut bacteria, which in turn is beneficial for our health to prevent chronic diseases like obesity. Number one on the list is Dokla. Dokla is prepared by soaking rice and lentils like channa dal then they are grounded to a batter and fermented overnight. The overnight fermentation process is the key which is absolutely critical for your good gut bacteria. Overnight fermentation helps the batter to rise while steaming. When you ferment the batter in dokla it increases polyphenol availability. The flavonoids and phenolic acid in the polyphenols are a potent antioxidant which will influence your gut microbiome directly. As they are steamed Homemade dokla 1 to 2 per day is an excellent low calorie snack. Dokla is spongy like a trampoline park with foam pit where the good gut bacteria can jump and bounce and play. My friend Saravana Kumar's wife Tirubur Sundari after her Gujarat trip tried dokla at home. Dokla turned out to be so hard that it can be used to construct the statue of unity. If you are familiar with dokla already you can use it as a snack option in reduced quantities. If you are not familiar with dokla please check out the link in the description regarding how to make it. The number two in the list is pickles. During pickling, the shelf life of food is extended by anaerobic fermentation by either using brine or vinegar. Vinegar contains high level of acetate which is one of the short chain fatty acids which could potentially influence your gut microbiome. My patient Arake Sami scraps the pickle from every nook and corner of the pickle jar using his finger and licks it after one peg of alcohol. He then opens his eyes only after his kidney was put in a jar. You should be careful with store-bought pickles because it contains a lot of salt and lot of oil. Homemade pickles, you can control the oil, you can control the salt and the spices to your level. Because of its high salt content, you need to be careful with the amount, especially if you have high blood pressure. My friend Sarana Kumar went to Gujarat and asked the store guy, Hey, why are you having only pickle ra? Where is the alcohol? What are you going to do only with this pickle ra? Let me know in the comment section, have you tried American pickles? How do you compare American pickles with Indian pickles. If you are a big fan of Indian pickle, what is your favorite pickle, whether it is homemade or not? Product number three is called Kanji. Kanji is a fermented drink that people from Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan would love to have during winters. Bacteria in the fermented food can actually survive the stomach acid and travel all the way into the intestine, growing our good gut bacteria. My US friend Mark Anthony, in winter, he keeps himself warm by drinking fermented grapes daily, also called as wine. And in summer, he chills out in my hospital ICU. Kanji is made from antioxidant rich black carrot, beetroot, mustard and black salt. The potent concoction preserved in jar and left to ferment in the sun for 2-3 to three days. My friend Saravna Kumar is saying he is allergic to any kind of fermentation from vegetables but he is okay with fruits like red grapes, white grapes, black grapes, alpine grapes, burgundy grapes. Instead of the ceramic jar, he should be made to stand out in the hot sun for 2-3 to three days to ferment him. I have added a link in the description for this recipe as well. The fourth superfood is Enduri Pita. Enduri Pita is a variety of pancake made using fermented batter of ground rice and urad dal, extremely popular in the state of Odisha. Fermented foods can be easily digested because of partial protein digestion that happens during fermentation which is also increasing the availability of antioxidants, vitamins and minerals as well. Traditionally, it is steamed in wide mouthed earthen pots. A frame made with twigs is placed inside the pot above the level of the water and the pitas are placed on top of this frame to be steamed. Prepared usually once a year during Pratamashtami, just before winter sets in, this is a ritual that celebrates the life and prosperity of firstborns in a family. Parents of my patient R.O.K. Sami celebrate for the life and prosperity of him by giving laddus and gulab jamuns to him. They celebrate for his prosperity but I prosper even though I am not the firstborn. Let me know have you ever tried Enduri Pita? The recipe is in the description link. The fifth superfood is Hawaii Jar. 
The whole seeds are soaked overnight and pressure cooked till the seeds are soft. The cooked soya is packed tightly in a small bamboo basket, the sides of which is layered and lined with banana leaves. The basket is then kept in the sun for fermentation process to take place for about 4 to 5 days. Now I know from where Mary Comb from Manipur got all the strength to win 6 world championship with 3 kids. For my patient Arukya Sami's health condition, having a kid itself is an achievement. During fermentation, Bacillus subtilis is a bacteria which breaks down the protein into smaller free amino acids that explains the rich quality of protein in this food. My loyal subscriber Subramani is asking, Sir, you always say about fermented products only for vegetarian options. Sir, can you give me something non-vegetarian? Only a brain fermented with non-vegetarian thoughts right from birth can think like this. I have tried this one. It is amazingly delicious. Please check out in the description regarding the video of how to make Hawaii jar. The superfood number 6 is Kurisa. Kurisa is a type of bamboo which is indigenous to Northeast Asia. While it is edible, ripened bamboo shoots are used for construction of huts typical to Assam. The young bamboo shoots are striped off their outer fibrous layers and the inner creamy white core is crushed and mixed with a plant called Garcinia pedunculata. Then it is tightly packed inside sterilized jars or pots and left to ferment for 5 to 10 days. Food fermentation has relied on the microbiota naturally occurring on the raw food material. It can also be done by transferring the microbiome from previously fermented products. Packed with beneficial bacteria, this fermented bamboo shoot dish Corisa will help in digestion. The only connection that my friend Saruna Kumar has with bamboo is that he watches videos of a guy building a house with bamboo inside the forest alone. I am pretty sure he would skip Corisa by pole vaulting with the bamboo stick. Please let me know have you tried Corisa before? The video of how to make Corisa is in the description. Superfood number 7, Solkadi. Solkadi is a very popular Indian probiotic food. It is a specialty of Konkan region that extends from Goa through Maharashtra. You extract fresh coconut milk from raw coconut and mix it with a plant species called Garcinia indica also called as kokum. You use garlic, cumin seeds and other spices and grind it together. The probiotic content in this traditional drink promotes gut health. You have to be a little bit careful in the amount of coconut milk because even though it has healthy fats, it is rich in calories. My loyal subscriber Subramani is asking, I will definitely try Dr. Pal. What is the alcohol percentage in Solkadi? Will I not be caught by the police when I bring it back? Back home. Day. How on earth I will make him understand that not everything in Goa is alcohol? My friend Saravana Kumar and his wife Tirbura Sundari went for a family trip to Goa. She went to a place to try Solkadi, he went to a bar to try Feni. They went as a couple to Goa, came back as single. Let me know whether you know how to do Solkadi. If not, there is a video in the description which explains the step by step process. The eighth superfood is Ambali. Ragi Ambali also known as Ragi Kanji is a traditional South Indian beverage made from finger millet flour called Ragi. It is consumed during the hot summer months for its cooling properties. It is a semi-liquid fermented broth made with buttermilk, finger millet flour, onion, curry leaves and salt. The mix is left overnight to ferment. Ragi Ambali can contain beneficial probiotics that supports gut health. My friend Saruna Kumar buys one cup of ragi kanji from the street shop and finishes one whole bag of finger chips kept as a side dish. Finger chips overpowers the finger millet. Ragi kanji is considered as food for the poor by some people. There are two problems with the statement. Number one, everybody should understand that health is wealth. Number two, ragi kanji is not cheap anymore because it is eaten with onions. I love ragi kanji. Whenever I get a chance, I try to include that in diet. Let me know whether you have tried this beautiful dish before. If not, check out the link in the description for a video of how to make it. The last superfood, my favorite superfood is dosa. Dosa, like any other fermented food, is rich in microorganisms, rich in probiotics, which will aid in digestion and promote good gut bacteria. In fact, wheat dosa made from fermented wheat batter is another excellent source of probiotics. But the problem nowadays is they are adding so many things inside the dosa except for the bacteria. They are adding lots of ghee, Oreo biscuit, charcoal dosa, rasagulla dosa. The ghee roast is made so long that if it is placed on the plate of my friend Saravana Kumar in Tamil Nadu, 
Tamil My friend Abhijit Chakraborty from Bengal can eat it. And people pour so much oil like hypertension swaha, diabetes swaha, obesity swaha. Homemade dosas, moderation in oil and number of dosas is the key. My loyal subscriber Subramani records a video of a live dosa in a marriage ceremony and watches it later as highlights when he is fasting. Let me know how many dosas you usually eat depending upon the size of the dosa. I always tell my patients that add lots of vegetables, add lots of fibers along with dosa so that you can decrease the number of dosas and you can increase the number of vegetables. These are all my favorite fermented foods. Let me know which one you have tried, which one you are going to try, which video you are going to watch from the recipe link. Bottom line is any kind of fermented food is going to make your gut happy. Remember, the balance of good gut bacteria over bad gut bacteria is absolutely critical for your long-term health. Remember, one belly at a time, it is absolutely important. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.